Hello, good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here, and today we have several kind of nutty entries in the World Warships dev blog today. The announcement of some new tests regarding CV spotting mechanics, France gets another super ship, and changes yet again to submarines. Pretty big ones again this time around. So we're going to go ahead and get started in the order of their release, starting with the changes to aircraft detection mechanics. I'm going to read straight from the development blog and give you guys my two cents on each entry. Links to the dev blog will be in the description down below. Any relevant images or artwork will be thrown up on screen for you guys to view. So let's go ahead and get started with the first one. So they say changes to aircraft detection mechanics, closed test. I think it's really important, especially given the nature of this development blog, to understand that this is a closed internal test with Wargaming. And it's not the first one that we've seen, especially in regards to aircraft detection mechanics. A little while ago, it was like three or four months ago, they announced that they were testing out a delayed spotting mechanic for ships spotted via aircraft, very similar to the six second delay that you get with radar. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. We're testing a new concept for the, de for the, for the detection of ships by aircraft. Last time we touched on the topic of ships detection by aircraft, we shared the radio concept. There we go. Today we're ready to share details about another new mechanic. Please note that this test is a proof of concept. If successful, the mechanics will be polished and we will share more detailed information about how they work. In this new concept, airplane squadrons being directly controlled by a player have a limited cone of view within which enemy ships can be spotted and info about their position shared with the entire team. Enemy ships outside this field of view will not be visible unless their AA is firing at the squadron. This field of view can be expanded to cover a full 360 degrees around the squadron with a special consumable. Ships base detectability range by air is now equal to their detectability range by sea, but all other modifiers affect it as before. However, planes can only detect ships at distances closer than 10 kilometers. The new mechanics will allow for increased interaction with aircraft in the game. Ships will be able to make more meaningful attempts to avoid detection through active maneuvering and manually disabling AA defenses. Please note the information in the development blog is preliminary. Announced adjustments and features may change multiple times during testing. The final information will be published on our game's website. Okay, this is... I... This... I'm not sure how I like this... In fact, I don't think I like it at all. So, it sounds like what they're testing out is that essentially the pilot's eyes in the planes are glued straight forward ahead in a certain canonical view. So, like, from, I don't know, 45 degrees to the right, 45 degrees to the left, there's a cone of view in which the planes can spot the ships. But now your ships are detected at their normal surface detection. Which, of course, for something like GK is like, let's say, 15.7 uh, kilometers and the plane detection. I, I have no idea what GK's plane detection is because you're always spotted no matter what. But your plane, your, 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 your detection by air is normally much shorter than your detection by um, surface. For most DDs, it's like 2 kilometers, 2.5 kilometers, something like that. While their surface detectability might be five or six kilometers, uh, this is why most DDs keep their AA turned off. Because if your AA is off, then you won't be spotted when your AA fires. So your detection by air has gone down from your AA range, which might be I don't know 5.8 in a destroyer. Now it's gone down to 2.3. And by the game scale, 2.3 kilometers, you're essentially on top of them. So the CV, rather than just you know flying around and then skirting your AA bubble, and now your AA shooting at them, now you're spotted. They have to essentially stumble right on you to spot you in the current way that this would work, uh, that this that the air spotting mechanics work. This spotting mechanics, however, you're spotted from your surface detection range from 10 kilometers inward. So this means that the CV's player wouldn't have to stumble upon you. They would just have to get within your normal detection range of, I don't know, again, let's say 5.8 kilometers. If you're within their cone of view. If you're not within that cone of view, either your AA has to fire or... 
you aren't seeing. I'm not sure if they're going to do a sure detected, you know, with the two, whole two kilometer thing. They don't mention that here, and this is just, you know, a proof of concept test as well. So, in some ways, this is a massive, massive buff to CVs, of course, because now, if this goes through, which again, this is just a closed proof of concept test, you could just have your pilots being in the right cone. I'm sorry, you can have the destroyer being in the pilot's cone of view from seven kilometers away and now you're spotted, which is obviously terrible, terrible, terrible for DD players. But if you're not within that cone, then you're not spotted unless your AA fires. Now, granted, it may not sound terrible to some of you, but do keep in mind, you know, obviously good players, no more destroyers tend to go, especially given their type of destroyers. Cabros is going to be out in the open, ships like Small and Hall and Daring can be closer to the gap, and of course on various maps you can pretty much, after playing this game long enough, pretty much have a good idea of where those DDs are going to go, so obviously this would be very easy for a very skilled and very seasoned CV player to exploit quite well. And then I, I think the consumable to expand your coverage to 360 degrees is kind of funny it's like oh you have to have a consumable to make your pilots turn their head from left to right for a couple of seconds so yeah i'm not a fan of this I, the radio concept seems like a much easier and straightforward way to where there's a six or four or three second delay from the ship being spotted to the information being related to the carrier, then from the carrier to the fleet. That makes a lot more sense and is a little bit more immersive, quote unquote, for the game rather than having a pilot with like a NASCAR neck, uh, neck brace on where he can't turn his head at all and you can only see out in front of him. You can see a long way out in front of him, but only right, uh, out right in front of him. So yeah. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. I don't think it's going to get very far. Again, it's just a proof of concept. They're not saying this is for sure coming to the game. It's just something that they're messing with right now. Alright, uh, next dev blog, we have some changes to test ships and submarines. So, I won't bother going through every single little ding-dong in this dev blog. Uh, but you, some pickups, uh, the Atlantico, which is the next stockyard ship and main battery reload, got nerfed from 29 to 30 seconds. She has 10, I believe, 15-inch guns. This is the um, South, South American or Pan American Dreadnought with Goliath caliber secondary guns, and it is, again, the next dockyard ship. And then the Maya, her HE shells were actually nerfed a bit from 3,300 damage down to 3,000 maximum damage. And her main battery reload time was increased from 15 to 16.5 seconds. Uh, the Hornet, which is a tier 8 carrier with B-25s, her aircraft on deck got nerfed from 20 to 16, and her squadron size got nerfed from 10 to 8, and her attacking flight got decreased from 5 to 4. The army threshold of her bombs was nerfed as well from 36 to 30. Her tactical bomber squadron, which is the B-25s, the cooldown time got increased again to 180 seconds from 170 seconds. And they now have the engine cool and consumable, so you can boost your B-25s now. Alright, the uh, Italian destroyers across the board, their torpedo time, uh, reload time got increased on the tier 2 and the tier 3 by about uh, 15 to 25 seconds. And from the tier 5 to the tier 8, their reload time got increased yet again from about half a second on up. So, yeah, the, the, those Italian DDs have absolute insane SAP DPM. So it, it was pretty much uh, expected that they would get nerfed in some way, shape, or form. Although their emergency engine power consumable did get buffed from 20 to 25 seconds, or about 5 seconds across the board from the Tier 6 on up. The tier 5 actually got hers nerfed a bit, and their charges for emergency engine power consumable got increased from Tier 6 and Tier 7. Same with the tier 5 as well. Alright, so submarines. Submarines got nerfed again and hard this time yet again. So, good god. Their duration underwater has been absolutely just cut now. Like, it's like they've been cut off at the kneecaps. So, if you haven't been following with the submarine changes, they got nerfed. Their survivability got nerfed through the floor the last time with um, various changes, like every time you hit them with depth charge down, they are going to get a flooding on them. Uh, they leak oil now, so you can see where they're at. They only have three depths to choose from, periscope, surfaced, and maximum depth. And 
Of course, their torpedoes too got nerfed quite some time ago. Now, their maximum floating damage has been increased from 25 to 33 percent of the total ship's HP. So the floods hurt more now as well. And then for the cash slot, her dive time got reduced from 270 to 170. The Salmon got reduced from 300 to 200. The Balao, which is the tier 10 US sub, got reduced from 300 to 240. The U-69, her dive capacity was reduced from 300 to 230, and the recharge rate of that dive capacity got decreased from 1.5 to 1 per second. The U-190 got hit freaking hard from 360 to 250 for its dive capacity, and then its recharge rate again went down to 1 per second. The U-2501, same as the U-190, 110, sec 110 capacity all from 360 to 280, sorry, 120 off from 360 to 280, and it too, its recharge rate got reduced from 1.5 to 1 second, I'm sorry, to 1 per second. So yeah, um, yeah, these subs aren't going to be underwater for very long anymore. I mean, shoot, this is, in many cases, a, roughly a third of their dive time underwater has been absolutely just removed. So they are definitely trying to appease the one of the biggest cries from the community is that the subs can spend the entire match underwater and shoot after this they won't freaking be able to unless you're you know running at the surface the entire time which was kind of the smart thing to do with the last iteration of submarines you stay at the surface and then when you needed to you dove on it which which is really what these submarines did in real life these weren't until you get to the U-251, they weren't actual, like, submersibles that were meant to spend most of their time underwater. They were more of sh boats that would stay at the surface and then um, go below the surface when needed. But they were primarily, most of the time, running on the surface until we got the U-251. That's the only actual submarine that we have in the game so far. So, yeah, now that's definitely going to be the case. Because if you go underwater at the start of match, you're just freaking wasting your dive time now. Now, granted, the Germans do get the emergency battery reserves where they essentially get 30 seconds of free time underwater. But, again, that is just the one consumable that they have to kind of help offset this. It's probably why they got hit a little bit harder than the Americans did, if we're being honest here. So, yeah. Submarines. They're, um, they're whacking them with the Nerf bat. So, we'll see how they are upon the next iteration of testing, which should be the next patch, 11.2. Alright, so the most recently released dev blog is that the French are getting a super battleship on top of the super cruiser that they have, and this thing is friggin' nuts. Alright, so 11.3 closed testing Patrie. French super battleship Patrie will enter the game for closed testing in the upcoming session. And here she is, boys. Look at that frickin' superstructure. It's just a cube. It's like something I'd build in, like, Stormworks or something. <laughs> Alright. A battleship armed with 12 431mm guns and an AA battery composed of 1950s-era weaponry. In keeping with the theme of high-tier French battleships, Patry enjoys a good top speed, a strongly protected citadel, and enhanced agility thanks to the engine boost consumable and a unique combat instructions effect. With regards to armament, the main battery's 12 431mm guns are spread across three quadruple turrets and have a high rate of fire. The quick-firing secondary battery po uh, boasts a long range. Activating Patrie's special combat instructions further improves the main battery's fire rate and the armor penetration of both main and secondary batteries, as well as the ship speed. The 20th century French Navy's naming convention for battleships is quite easily discernible. Foremost is the tradition of naming them after historical French provinces. For example, Bretagne, Normandy, and Alsace. Far less commonly, battleships were also named after the legendary uh, naval commanders of the nation's past, such as Jean Bart, great statesmen such as Richelieu and Clemenceau, as well as cities such as Paris and Dunkirk. However, if we adjust our sights and look further into the past, into the age of iron and steam, we will see a range of names almost as diverse and peculiar as the appearance of the very same warships they were being assigned to. Very French. These include the name of the Gaelic and Frankish ancestors that serve as ideological foundations for the modern French state, such as Bernus Charlemagne, influential figures of the Enlightenment and French Revolution, such as Danton, Mirabeau, Volta Voltaire, or 19th century admirals such as 
Beauvau, and I'm not going to try to pronounce that. We may speak French down here, but it's Cajun French, not that proper Paris stuff. <laughs> the names of these old battleships were not only limited to the tangible, but also dipped into the uh, symbols and ideas of the French Republic, such as Liberté, Justice, Verité, Democratie. Chief among all in the latter naming convention was Republique and its sister ship, the Patrie. Fatherland. A name, ooh, fatherland, ooh, a name that might sound familiar for the first naming of La Mazarai, the French national anthem, Allons Infants de la Patrie, Arise Sons of the Fatherland. We at World Warships consider such an impactful and meaningful name to be appropriate for France's first super battleship. Ooh, I was wondering why they went with Patrie, because I, I googled it before and it just means country, but fatherland, okay. Ship's characteristics, let's look at this. French super battleship Patrie. 108,900 hit points, 32 millimeters of plating, 3x4, 431s, firing range 26.6 kilometers, maximum HE shell damage 6,300, HE shell armor pin 72 millimeters, 48% chance of causing a fire, how very Republic of you, HE initial velocity 840 meters a second, maximum AP shell damage 14,500, AP initial velocity 840 meters a second, again very Republic. So she gets a 20 second reload time, the turret's 180 and 36 seconds. Maximum dispersion is 327 meters. Sigma is 2.0. Okay. So the secondary is you get 8x2 of the 100mm guns with an 8.3 km base range. Maximum H shell damage of 1400. 6% chance of causing a fire. H initial velocity of 780 meters a second. Uh, the 152s, you get 3x3 three three of those, so 9 in total. 8.3 km. Maximum H shell damage 2200. Chance to cause a fire 12%. HE initial velocity 870 meters a second. Alright, maximum speed 31 knots, a 1090 meter turning circle radius, a rotor shift time of 19.6 seconds, surface, detect surface detectability of 17.8 kilometers, air detectability of 15.1 kilometers. You get damage con, repair party, and engine boost. The combat instructions increases the speed by 7%. You get a 90% boost to your HE shell's armor penetration capability. Main caliber guns reload 20% faster. And at last for 50 seconds, you need 12 gunshots to fill up the bar. Okay, uh, a 90% boost to your HE will actually make the French secondaries quite usable. Granted, it's only going to be active for 50 seconds. And then after that, you have to get 12 more shots with the guns, which really won't be hard with the reload time of the guns. So, yeah, um, this one's going to be interesting because, like, you could secondary build into it. But if it's got secondaries that are similar to, like, the Alsace and the Republic, those get knocked out so freaking easily, it probably won't even be worth it. But obviously, that's what they're going for with the you know, the increased penetration of the HE shells with the combat instructions because we, you know, freaking, uh, how, how much do, do the, uh, main battery guns pin? Yeah, 72 millimeters. You're pinning everything you freaking need with 72 millimeters of pin. It's not like you want to be able to pin, what, 160-something millimeters of armor with your HE? Yeah, no. Um, we'll see. We'll see what it's like. It's an interesting design. A very, very, very interesting set of combat instructions. And yeah, it looks like a much better tier 10 French battleship than the Republic. This one would have made a lot more sense being the tier 10. Um, obviously a much more toned down version of this than the Republic, but yeah, 431 millimeter guns. So it's not like the um, Satsuma and the Hanover where you can obviously cross 32. You pin 30, which is very good, of course, with the uh, 431s. And um, obviously the reload time will make up for not having 19 or 20 inch guns like the other super battleships do. But yeah, 1950s AA as well. So this should help with the super carriers. Good God, tier 10 going to get freaking nuts with these ships being added in if they keep adding them in at this rate. All right, guys, so let me know what you guys think about all this in the comments down below. Hope you guys are having a wonderful Friday. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. We're on way to 35,000 subs. I cannot thank you guys enough for that. I will be live streaming right here on the channel from 5 p.m. U.S. Central Time to 8 p.m. U.S. Central Time tonight on YouTube and on Twitch. So please come out and join us for that. Hope you're having a wonderful Friday. Have a wonderful weekend. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.